Hey there, Vanagon Addicts. It's Ken Wilford here at Van Again. Uh, I just wanted to do this as a voiceover because I had a lot of noise in the background. Talk about what I'm doing here in this video. So the first thing you're seeing is what I like to do when I'm getting ready to do heads on an engine, which is clean up the surface around where the head gasket goes. Um, I usually use some sandpaper here. Get any rough edges off. If you see pitting, then you should fill it in with some JB Weld, which I actually did the day before on this engine. We've got our cylinder head studs installed, and uh, you saw the video on that. Now I'm just kind of sanding down any sharp edges, any places where the JB Weld is still kind of high. You want to make sure that there's nothing sharp right there that can cut into the head gasket uh, you don't want to get too crazy and make it like rounded or anything but you just want to take off the very sharp edge so it's kind of like a blunted edge okay so that's what i'm doing here um i don't know if you guys like these videos where i'm narrating over uh also i have a new intro that uh, we just had here on this one let me know what you guys think about that I have been doing a lot more video editing and stuff lately, so I'm hoping that you guys are going to like that. Tell me if you like it in the comments. Tell me if you don't like it. Um, it takes me so much more time to try to get these videos ready when I have to do the, uh, you know, the video editing and stuff, but I'm trying to make it nicer for you guys so you can enjoy it more. And, you know, it just makes the whole thing uh more professional okay so that's what i'm trying to do so then i use some brake cleaner clean off any of the dust any of the stuff where i have been sanding get that all nice and cleaned off so that when you put the thing together um there's no debris there there's no dust and dirt from where you did your sanding um, i never put any glue on the case when I put the head gasket on, I just put it on there without anything. And then I always glue the other side. So that's what you guys are going to see. All right. I, my video has frozen here on me. Give me one second. Let me stop this. Okay. My video started working again. So now we've moved on from cleaning up the engine case to cleaning up the pistons. Um, again, I'm using some brake cleaner on this and we're just cleaning it up and getting it ready to go back together I mean there's not much really to say about this part except that uh, you just use brake cleaner you use some scotch bright uh, clean up the piston head and just keep washing it off uh, and then I usually use that on the rings also uh, you know the thing says to uh, take a ring off use a piece of broken ring and scrape in the, the ring lands, but I usually don't do that. I usually just move them around because the open ends of the rings are also scraping the ring lands. See how I'm doing that with my hand like that? That's how I usually do it. I'll put some, some brake cleaner in there and just kind of like rotate them around in a circle until all the garbage falls out and into the bucket there. So that's about it. So I'm going to stop talking now and just let this go until something interesting, until I get to another interesting moment here.
Okay, so I'm back narrating again. Um, what I'm trying to show you right now is now they've got the rings all nice and cleaned up. You can see they're moving very easily. You want to make sure that you put your rings at the proper orientation. Uh, your oil ring, which is the biggest, widest one that's towards the bottom, it should always be on the top side, okay? Uh, pointing up when you install it in the motor. Also, your very top ring will also be on the top side also. And then the center ring is going to be facing down. Okay, so this is going to, you don't want your ring gaps to line up. You want them to be staggered. And you don't want the, the two of them to be on the bottom because then oil could possibly pass through uh, when the motor's cold or when it's just sitting there for a while. So you want to have those first one and the last one to be facing up. You also want them to be staggered from each other. And you want the center one to be down. And then on the piston itself, how you can tell whether it's in the orientation of up and down is that on the face of it has an arrow that's going to be pointing towards your um, flywheel. Okay, So if you see that arrow, you just turn the piston until that arrow would be pointing towards the flywheel. And then you would know that that one is in the proper orientation for setting up your rings. Then another thing that you're going to do here, um, you know, because this is a used piston, I'm using, again, I normally don't use these. I usually will get new ones because of how much extra time. You see how much extra time it's taking me to clean this up, to work on this, to get it together. If these pistons weren't brand new, which they pretty much are, 75,000 miles, I wouldn't waste my time on them. Okay, now it does save some money, but it's not that much money. If I spend, as a mechanic, if I spend two hours cleaning all these up, honing everything, I, it probably took me two to three hours to get these all ready to go. Um, that's $125 an hour. Okay, so you can do the math on that and figure out that I could just buy a set of pistons and cylinders for like 300 something dollars that are brand new, that I don't have to do any work to whatsoever, and just put them together, that everything will go great. That makes way more sense to me than trying to reuse old stuff unless you know that it's amazing condition. okay? Or unless you don't have a choice, like you're in another country and you don't have easy access to parts. But to be honest, we ship all over the world. And we can even ship to Central America, South America. You know, Unless you're on Sentinel Island or something like that, we can pretty much ship to you. So, you know, I, my advice normally is to buy the new stuff and not do this. But if you're going to do it, we're showing you how to do it. So right now what I'm doing is using a piece of Scotch-Brite, cleaning up the piston pin, which has got lacquer on it, cleaning up the hole in the piston where the pin goes in. Again, I use Scotch-Brite. I don't use uh, anything more abrasive than that uh, because you don't want to remove a lot of material. You just want to remove... The stuff that's like the lacquer and varnish, or whatever you want to say. So that pin will go in and out very smoothly. Because when you go to try to install this into the car, into the engine, um, you need that pin to just slide in there real nice because it it's, can be a struggle. So um, that's why I am putting this pin in here, cleaned everything up, making sure it's sliding in and out fully and really nice condition that way. Because when you go to slide this in the car, you know, you'll see when I do that video in your room, your space is very limited. Everything has to line up perfectly. You don't want it not going together because you got some extra varnish in there that's jamming stuff up. So, you know, that's basically it for this video, guys. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. Okay, you can see I'm also doing the same thing in the end of the rod here. Uh, and make sure that's going there smoothly. Please like, share, subscribe. Please become a member. Okay, And we will see you guys on the next video. Thanks for coming with us today, uh, Vanagon Addicts.